The Sony RX0 Mark II is a strange camera. On the one hand, it's about the same size as an action camera, yet it has a huge sensor, can record internally up to 4K 30 frames per second, has a flip up screen and a mic in jack, and it's water, dust, shock, and crutch proof? Wait, what? Is this seriously some kind of crazy super camera with features and specs that boggle the mind? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Yeah, the RX0 is a unique camera, there is no two ways around it. And, to be frank, I did not like the Mark 1. Oddly enough, it was one of the first cameras that we ever checked out here on the Everyday Dad, fun fact. I thought it was crazy overpriced, it overheated while recording 1080p in like 5 minutes, didn't have a flip up screen, and honestly it was... It was just pretty bad. Bottom line of this video up front, however, I fully expected to dislike this camera. I just assumed Sony didn't fix anything and added a flip up screen to placate us online content creators. But in actuality, this might be the best stealth YouTube camera ever made. This is not an action camera. This is a legitimate, full featured video camera that has excellent image quality and no one will have any idea you are making videos when you use something that's basically the same size as a battery. If you are nervous about having a big camera rig around like this full frame mirrorless camera, that's something that I absolutely struggle with. So this might be an amazing camera for you. But let's check out the video specs really quickly. This tiny Titan comes equipped with a 15.3 megapixel, one inch Exmor stacked CMOS sensor. It has a fixed camera with a 24 millimeter full frame equivalent with a constant f4 aperture. It does have access to Sony's high frame rate video recording in up to a usable 240 frames per second. A new function it has over any of the other Sony cameras is its new electronic steady shot technology. So instead of having the optical image stabilization like the FDR X3000, which is fantastic, but in that instance, the lens moves around a little bit inside of the camera. This does what the GoPro does and stabilizes itself electronically by cropping in on the image a little bit. It's not it's not the worst, but it's better than nothing. The RX0 Mark II does have Sony's face tracking autofocus technology. However, instead of having continuous autofocus, you do only get autofocus singles. So you'll need to half press the shutter, wait for focus, and then press it the full way, then start recording to make sure that you are in crispy focus. And my least favorite part of the camera, though I understand why, because when you want your camera to be a certain size, you need to make the battery smaller, but that's the inclusion of the NP-BJ1 battery. I wish they'd use something like the BX1 battery that's found in the FDR and the RX100 line of cameras, but again, I totally, I understand it, I just don't like it. But enough talking at the camera, let's cover the four most important aspects of a camera for the online content creator. And for those new to the channel, welcome. Those are video quality, how easy is the camera to set up, how fiddly is it to use after you started recording, and finally, what does the upgrade path slash ecosystem look like? First off, let's talk video quality. And honestly, I'm impressed at what quality this little camera is packing. Like we mentioned in the beginning of the video, it can record in basically the same ways that an RX100 Mark V can. 4K up to 30 frames per second, 1080p-ish up to 240 frames per second, it's got S-Log2, ISO can go up to 12,000, I mean, it's just got some very impressive technical specs. And I think the image quality coming out of the camera is great. Sony really knows how to make these little censored cameras, and it shows because you get very nice looking colors straight out of the camera. Something that I was very happy to see is the inclusion of picture profiles, because we all know, I mean, how could you not think I would mention this in every single Sony video? It has Sony picture profiles. I mean, again, number one is my favorite. We're recording on number one right now. And having access to that here makes this even more useful to me. I will say the biggest negative image quality wise when you consider the price of the camera against what else is out there is the constant aperture. F4 is kind of a weird place for a camera like this. On the one hand, it's decent outdoors, but it won't be like dark enough even during mildly sunny days, and you'll still need to correct your exposure with your shutter speed because you can't stop the aperture down. But indoors, it's not open enough to be able to do much either. You won't have very good indoor image quality because one inch sensor with F4 is pretty rough. I mean, I can understand the reasoning for the F4, but it ends up being a master of none instead of good at either indoor or outdoor video. I do kind of wish that this had an F2.8, but when it comes to internal recording, this is much improved over the RX0 Mark I. The Mark I would overheat before you even started recording, but with the Mark II, I'm getting about 11 minutes of 4K recording before the heat indicator turns on, and the camera will eventually turn off around the 15 minute time frame. 
That's better than even the RX100 Mark V can do. That only lets you record five minutes at a time. So this does pretty darn well. And a big benefit when it comes to a fixed lens camera like this is the Mark II has Sony's digital clear image zoom built in, meaning that you can zoom in two times without any image quality loss, effectively turning this into a 24, 35, and 48 millimeter lens camera. That's pretty crazy to think of for a camera smaller than, you know, most of my batteries. It's it's basically a camera full of prime lenses. It's it's pretty awesome. Something I didn't think that I would like, but I'm finding myself pleasantly surprised with is the autofocus system. Like we mentioned in the beginning, it doesn't have a continuous autofocus system, but it has very decent single autofocus. What's nice about this is with the smaller sensor and the F4 aperture that I, yes, I was just complaining about, once you set the focus, even if you move back and forth a little bit, the depth of field is deep enough where you won't have a very big issue about you moving out of focus. But the second part of video quality is the audio, and I have zero rooms to complain here. I really like that a camera this small has a 3.5 millimeter audio inject. Not many other cameras in this category are rocking that. I mean, not, I mean, not very many at all. I can only think of two other cameras. This and the Sony FDR X3000. But where the RX0 really succeeds here is like a full featured Sony camera, you can turn down the internal audio gain and use a powered microphone for awesome results. Audio quality was fantastic. But don't take my word for it, let's hop outside real quick for a video slash vlogging test. <laughs> Welcome to the vlogging test of the Sony RX0 Mark II. Let's get it going. I do like little cameras that just I just like little cameras that are so easy to use. Like normally I have a huge rig and I'm like, oh, oh goodness. Now it's just one camera. Yes, fully support just one camera. Something that we'll talk about in the fiddliness part of this video is like right now, if you've ever used an FDR X3000, you'll know that sometimes they have a problem reading your memory card because it doesn't seat like perfectly well in there. And we are having that issue right now. It's gotta be like perfect. Vlogging test actually. Autofocus on, begin. Whoa. Okay, here is the Sony RX0 Mark II. We are wandering around a new filming spot today. I've actually, I found a new trail by my house and I like coming out and learning about new mountain biking spots or new running spots. So I found this, I was like, oh yeah. Oh yeah, we're definitely doing the vlogging test there today. This thing is so incredibly light and I really like the flip screen. And we'll talk more about that in fiddliness but little cameras with flip screens, it's like the new revolution. It's like Sony for so long had only given us flip screens on a few cameras. And now they're like, every camera that comes out needs a flip up screen. I'm not opposed to that, by the way. I actually really like that. And uh, yeah, it's super lightweight. The image quality is great. Uh, you're hearing the audio right now. So this is the audio out of the RX0 Mark II. Audio test one, two, three. Audio test one, two, three. The other audio is still the audio coming out of the a6400 over there because I just like having better audio better -er. better -er. but yeah this is the image quality you can expect to get this is with the electronic image stabilization turned on Ooh, this is with the electronic image stabilization we're currently in 4k 24 frames per second with a shutter speed of 50 we're in you know aperture is always at f4 and we're in auto ISO and I think it's about I really like how the Sony cameras uh, they have this new uh, they have this new thing where when you're in auto ISO it still tells you what the ISO is so like right now we're at ISO 200 because it's incredibly cloudy out today and it's actually raining uh, we came out here and we got a really quick spot before it started raining again so yeah this is the vlogging test this is what you could get if you got this tiny tiny little RX0 and I gotta be honest I'll save this more for the conclusions but I like this way better than the RX0 Mark One okay back to the video. <laughs> And this is the indoor slash studio test of the Sony RX0 Mark II. Now, the big benefit of this camera, like we already mentioned, is that audio inject lets you do a lot of really cool audio stuff. Like you are currently hearing my regular sound system, which is an XLR microphone going through a mixer, which is incredible. And that's such a big benefit. Would I use this as an indoor studio camera? Probably not. I mean, one of the negatives is it's a tiny censored F4 aperture camera. So my light is currently at 100% and I'm being blinded by this little sun that's like right in my face. It's normally set to like 10%, but it, the image quality in this thing's fantastic. You'll probably get some noise like in the, in the shadows over here. So don't be surprised by that. But I think the subject 
myself, you know, I, I kind of think I look pretty good from time to time, uh, but I think the image quality looks good for your subjects, especially when you can light them properly, and I'm very impressed with the image quality out of this camera, and it could be like a B camera or a C camera to your indoor stuff. Okay, back to the video. <laughs> video quality is only one aspect of purchasing a camera, and it's not the most important if you ask me. The most important being ease of use. I'm probably gonna put that in as an echo. <laughs> there is no other way to put it. The body of the RX-0 Mark II is fantastically made. It feels very high quality, definitely feels like it's crush proof. I mean, can you hear that? This thing is very well made and it feels like it's actually worth the premium price that Sony charges. Something that I'm very happy and impressed with is this really isn't a stripped down camera. It has all of the functionality of a bigger Sony camera. And I say that because you know what? I was planning on beating this camera up pretty bad in this section because again, I remember the RX-0 Mark I, but it actually has a pretty intuitive and easy to use menu system if you speak Sony menu systems. Since you won't be changing the aperture and will only be dialing in ISO and shutter, you can go straight into the function menu, much like any other Sony camera, and efficiently change those settings as you see fit. But of course, the biggest update on the Mark II for ease of use, the flip up screen. I've spent the last year using full frame mirrorless cameras that don't have any kind of flip up screen. And now that I have this and the a6400 that have them, I'm incredibly happy to be able to monitor myself without needing any additional gear. And the flip screen here works perfectly well. I mean, it's not as good as the a6400 because that is a touchscreen and it's way bigger, but that's just the aspect of having this as a smaller camera. For the size, this works really well. And you know what? The more flip screens we can get, the better. I'm not gonna poo poo on this small. It works perfectly well. But what really matters is once you actually start making the video, and now we're in a little realm that I like to call fiddliness. So we are currently testing out the fiddliness of the RX0 Mark II. So what is fiddliness? Fiddliness is how easy is a camera to use after you hit record. So right now, we're currently recording on the RX0 Mark II. The audio you're hearing is from the RX0 Mark II. And as you can see, uh, all I have is the Rode wireless system. I don't have any like additional stuff. It's just a microphone plugged straight into the camera because as we've seen, the, uh, the RX-0 has a microphone jack plugged right into the back. Now that's incredible. Um, more cameras need to have microphone jacks plugged straight into the camera. Like the GoPro Hero 7 Black Run right now does not have, it doesn't have a microphone jack and that really stinks. So for fiddliness, uh, one of the negatives about your C right now, this screen turns off every what, like 30 seconds or so. That is a heat management problem, but it does make it a little harder to like trust the camera when you've got to like always press that button if you do clips longer than a minute or so. It's not a deal breaker, but it is pretty frustrating. Something else that's kind of, something else that's a little more fiddly than I would like about the RX-0 Mark II is this is not a touch screen and I get it. It's a super tiny screen, very useful. It's very useful to be able to do this at all. Um, but I don't like that you can't like change the focus or anything from in front of the camera. You can't even change the focus after you hit record. Like we're doing half shutter presses right now. The focus doesn't change. So you can only do autofocus single before you hit record. And then after that, you are stuck with that focus, which for fiddliness makes it a little harder. And that may sound like I'm dogging on the RX-0 over here, but I actually think it's a very powerful camera. And I really like what they were able to fit into such a tiny body. Like it takes, it takes a lot to be able to fit all that into a camera like this. When you've got to worry about heat, you've got to worry about recording codecs, and you've got to worry about all that. So fiddly, pretty good. Back to the video. Back again. So we decided to buy an RX Zero Mark II using those convenient affiliate links in the description below. <laughs> now what? Where can we grow from here? There are some first party accessories for the RX Zero, but they are eye-wateringly expensive. Like a $300 cage. Like, how crazy is that? Third party wise, you can get some cheaper options. There are some cheaper cages out there. You don't necessarily have to buy the Sony branded Sony cage. And if you want to make sure that your shutter speed is properly dialed in outside, there are external ND filters that you can also purchase. At the end of the day, I like the RX-0 way more than I thought I would, but for $700, it's a pretty pricey piece of kit. I wouldn't recommend this to somebody as their only camera, but if you are looking for a second angle or a portable travel camera, I would probably recommend this because this is basically the ultimate stealth camera. Wherever you go, no one will know that you're recording high quality 4K video from basically a battery. Like nobody's gonna know. Thanks for watching.